The RV Show USA is brought to you by Rockwood, building better RVs, making smarter RVers. And welcome again, everybody, to the uh, most listened to, most talked about show on radio and social media about the RV lifestyle, because this is the only place where you're going to hear the good, the sometimes not so good, and the occasional, well, downright ugly parts of RVing. That's right, sometimes RVing can get a little bit bumpy and be, uh, I guess, a little bit frustrating, but not to worry, we are here to help. My name is Alan Warren. I'm the RV wingman, doing my level best to keep you away from trouble and connect you with the best folks, most honest folks in the RV industry. And that's why they call me the RV wingman. So for many people who are catching this show, you're probably on social media. If you are, you probably watch some of the I don't know, endless YouTube videos on RVing. You add in the information that you'll learn from your RV dealer, the salesman, and then all the quote-unquote help that's available 24-7 in RVing Facebook groups. And it's no wonder that many RVers simply feel overwhelmed, especially the newbies. And you know what? When we are overwhelmed, it is not easy to make the best decisions. Case in point, I read a post this week in one of our Facebook groups where this newbie RVer, he was furious because the the slide-outs in his brand-new Class C motorhome were stuck. They were stuck out and would not go back in. He said that he could hear the motors running, but neither slide would go back in. Needless to say, he was not a happy camper. And he went on and on about how the manufacturer had done him wrong and how the dealer should have known and blah, blah, blah. And it turns out that the guy was actually parked in a campsite that wasn't level. In fact, it had quite a big difference in elevation from one end to the other and from one one side to the other. But he didn't have stabilizers on his coach. You know, those levelers, those, I don't know, maybe $1,500 accessory items that uh, may not come as standard, but they sure come in handy. And as this newbie found out, slide-outs are designed to go in and out when the RV is on level ground. That's the way they are designed. Is it the manufacturer's fault that the slide didn't function when the RV is all cattywampus? Is it the dealer's fault for not telling the buyer the importance of including stabilizers, levelers? Or is it the RVer's fault for trying to save $1,500 and never thinking he'd have a campsite that wasn't very level? Well, the actual truth is that, I don't know, but the reality is that we have an angry RVer, we have an RV where the slides are stuck, and a lot of blame to go around on social media, and it's fanning the flames. I, uh, I guess that's the nature of the beast. But anyway, my point is that when you are purchasing an RV, I know you want to save money. As much money as you can. I, I know that. But at what cost? I mean, your time is valuable. At least my time's valuable. If I'm in an RV, I don't want to spend my time feeling frustrated and cussing. When you buy an RV from the right dealer before they sell you the coach without levelers, they'll make a thousand percent sure that you know what the problem is if you park on a spot that is not level and if you expect your slides to work perfectly they're not designed to work that way i know i sound like a broken record but finding the right dealer is every bit as important as buying the right rv is you know what's funny is is that last weekend at our campground in texas at at, uh, big chief i see this brand new class c parked in a site it's not quite level either i'm thinking oh man this dude's RV's out of whack, and, and it didn't have levelers on it. Uh, his slide-outs were out. I'm thinking, oh, man, I hope he, I hope I don't hear that cussing because uh, the slides won't go back in, but I guess they did work because I didn't hear any cussing. And uh, uh, for those who say that RVs should be made like cars and trucks on an assembly line because new, you know new vehicles are almost always perfect, problem-free, when I toured the Rockwood Flagstaff plant a while back, they told, me, they told me how many RVs they turn out, but quite frankly, I can't remember. I think it was around 30 or so, but maybe a little bit more. It wasn't, wasn't as many as I thought it was going to be. Let's say 40. Let's say 40 RVs is what a plant can turn out a day. That's In a 10-hour day, that's one every 15 minutes. I see on the news the other day, though, that Ford is introducing a new electric F-150 pickup truck. Do you know how many F-150s they crank out in a day? Think about it. An RV manufacturer, maybe one every 15 minutes. Ford cranks out a new F-150 every 52 seconds. 52 seconds. The RV manufacturers that I know, in my opinion, do an overall pretty good job in turning out products. 
They're not perfect, but most are, most are pretty close. Most don't have many, if any, issues at all. But to expect an RV, which is basically a, you know, a house that's rolling down bumpy roads, and sometimes those bumpy roads, are, they're even worse than that, but it's a house on wheels, and they shake, and sometimes shake pretty good. Shaking is one of those reasons why periodic maintenance is so important. It may be okay to put off going to the doctor or calling and checking on your family. It may be okay to put off checking your email, but it is not okay to put off your RV's maintenance that can cause you a lot of problems in the future. It will usually come back and bite you. I still can't believe it. One new Ford F-150 every 52 seconds. Man. All right, let's see for you folks who uh, just love hearing about my favorite RV dealer, my favorite one to complain about, comes another sad new RV story from the pages of RV Travel. A brand new RV, this time it's out of Roscoe, Illinois, a little bit west and north of Chicago. Now this couple, now, this couple buys a new motorhome. They take their new rig out for a trip. Transmission acts up. So does the fridge. So do the levelers. Oh, and the AC's not working right either. Oh, the electrical system, too. It's, it, it just seems like everything's on the blink. Not good. So the owner had to have their new motorhome towed back to Camping World. Towed! Well, as of this last weekend when I read the story, uh, it's now been at the shop at Camping World for more than 100 days. How would you like to buy a new motorhome and not have the use of it because almost everything malfunctioned? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Chavez hired themselves an, att an attorney. They did. They're suing Camping World of Rockford, Illinois, and Jayco. They're the manufacturer of their 2020 uh, Jayco Greyhawk. They want their money back, all nearly $95,000 of it. Yeah. Plus, they want to be reimbursed for their loss of use as well as punitive damages. And do you know what happened? Hang on. You know what happened? The day after Camping World, the lawsuit was filed. A Camping World spokesman announced that the company is, quote, absolutely working on their issue to resolve it. End of quote. Boys and girls, I am no fan of Camping World, but I have to believe that some of the problems these folks experienced on their new RV, some of them, maybe just one of them, they had to have some kind of an idea that the RV was not ready to, to take possession of. Most dealers I know do a pretty decent job of their PDI, that's their pre-delivery inspection. The great dealers, the ones I tell you about, they want to make sure that everything is in working order before you leave the dealership. Less than stellar RV dealers can leave you feeling like, well, like Mr. and Mrs. Chavez, which is not good for the majority of RV dealers out there, and it's not good for the RV industry. So here's what you can do. Here's what you can do to help. If you're buying a new RV, do not take delivery. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it until you're happy with the condi condition that the RV is in, 100% happy before you leave the dealership. As harsh as this may sound, if the salesman if the salesman tells you, hey, go ahead and use it, no big deal, uh, bring it back in a few weeks, we'll fix whatever it is, please don't do that. Don't, don't buy that line. Only close on the deal. Only take possession of your new travel trailer or camper if you are happy with the current condition of your brand new RV. And finally, in this opening segment... You may recall I did a monologue recently about the number of full-time RVers with YouTube channels. You remember that one? Uh, these folks, are a lot of them are saying adios to living full-time in their home on wheels, and they're actually moving back to a smaller sticks and bricks home. Now, the point of that monologue was not to, well, let's see, it wasn't to put a damper on your dreams of becoming the next famous RVing YouTube couple. It wasn't. It wasn't to criticize these great people for changing their minds. A lot of us change their minds. Wasn't to criticize them for changing their minds, wanting to go back to settle down to a home without wheels, a little bit more space. The purpose, well, the purpose was to let you know that almost every single full-time YouTuber, RVer, that I visited with has expressed at some level that the whole YouTube thing is not quite what they thought it was going to be. Uh-uh. To make a compelling video that will generate enough money to make an RV payment is almost impossible. And the time it takes to create a video every week or every two weeks generally eats up, well, it eats up the reason that you bought the RV in the first place. RV is supposed to be fun, and it is. It's a lot more fun, though, when you're checking out the sunset with your eyeballs and not looking at it through the lens of a camera. That's right. 
I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. In our Ask the Manufacturer segment up next, you're going to be finding out about some of the parts shortages here in the RV industry and a whole lot more. Back after this. <laughs> 